Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Steve at Atomic Raceworks. Um, wanted to go over something that um, probably should have been addressed uh, long before now and there's tons of other YouTube videos about it so um, I just see it come up on our local pages and I get a, several messages um, almost weekly um, on the ARW page about um, the OBD-1 Hondas or cars that have been converted to OBD-1 having issues with uh, check engine light, um, cars running poorly, um, and there's a check engine light on. Uh, so something I wanted to shed some light on um, is uh, we're going to go over how to check the check engine light. And um, there's a couple of different ways depending on which program you use. Um, all the cars, even the 96 to 2000 Civics and Integras, have the two uh, connector, uh, the two wire connector under the dash um, that you can jump, count the check engine lights. Even if the, you know, if, even if it's a 2000 EM1 um, car has been converted to OBD1, you can still jump that connector. Check engine light flashes. Uh, the cool thing um, about Neptune is if you hold your foot flat on the gas, excuse me, um, with the car off. If it has a uh, has a code, um, you don't even have to jump the connector. You just have to hold it wide open throttle and count the flashes. So I'm going to go over how to do some of this with you today. And we'll kind of get it shared on some of the local pages. And hopefully this will help. Um, I get, like I said, a lot of messages. Um, a lot of cars get brought in um, for not running right. And they want to pay for the hour of diagnostic, which I don't mind doing. Um, it's just a lot of this stuff a lot of people can do at home so that's kind of what we're going to go over here a little bit so um get this turned around so here we have a uh a turbo civic um we converted it over to neptune it was on chrome um i'll get in and show you that right now we don't have any codes there's no issues we'll get it fired up um, so you see the check engine light come on goes off that's always a good sign um, we'll get this thing logging. Oh, it's already logging. So, um, so we'll see. We'll get it fired up. You can obviously see there's no check engine light. Um, you know, car's idling. Okay, it's still on a warm up. Um, no issues. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug a few things under the hood and we're gonna induce a check engine light. And we can go over that, so um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is shut the car off. And uh, we'll come out here. And just for for the sake of doing it, we'll do... I don't know if I can get it off with one hand. Okay, we're going to do the uh, air intake temp sensor. And we'll go ahead and do... The uh, idle air control valve. Okay, so air intake temp sensor and idle air control valve are both unplugged. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. Make sure. So we gotta. Now we have a solid check engine light. Um, just to make sure we get both codes, I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. It's gonna run like complete poop. I'm happy to keep it running, but that's gonna induce both codes for sure. So I'm having to keep my foot on the gas to keep it running. Um, we'll just let it die. Okay, so um, we see we have a solid check engine light on and we go over to our um, Neptune and we go to error codes and where it's gonna pop up. Um, it shows we have a fuel injector. Um, I was unplugging the injectors earlier to um, fix a, a, a fuel leak. Um, so that one's not relevant. Um, but you can see we have a code 10 and a code 14 are the ones that we're primarily looking for. But it's going to show all of them. So um, this is what the Neptune is reading. So what we're going to do is come in here. And all you have to do is with the car on, hold it wide open throttle. And three, four. So that's going to be code 14. Three, four, five, six. So that's going to be code 16. 
which is for the injector. We have one long, which is going to be code 10. And we have one long, one, two, three, four, which is code 14 again. One long, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is code 16 for the injector circuit. And then it starts over again with a one long, which is going to be code 10. Um, so, you take our foot off the gas and we can see we have a solid check engine light. Um, I'm not super familiar with um, Hondata if it does anything like this. Um, I just know Neptune does. Um, so, oh, and to go over the basics, so if you're not using Neptune or you are using Hondata, um, obviously you can just go back to the old school method. Um, something that I use that just makes it easy is uh, one of these. Um, you know, put wire in it and it's a, a terminal. Um, let's see if I can do this with one hand. So under the dash of, of the 92 to 95 Civics right here under the corner of the dash is this two wire connector. Um, pretty common. Um, I believe the 99 2000s, this connector is actually like way up under. You got to look um, like kind of attached to, to the harness that's coming down. Um, it's not right here at the corner. You have to dig a little bit. Um, I, the the 96 to 01 Integras, it's still right here up under the edge of the corner, but they're usually pushed up a little bit farther. You have to kind of feel up a little bit right here at the very edge of the dash. So um, let's see if I can get this in with one hand so you can watch. Uh, this is probably pretty funny. I'm very not very coordinated apparently holding okay so we got that in um, you can see now we're just basically jumping the connector and we're gonna get our same codes so we can see the check engine lights flashing like it normally would um, so yeah that's a good way to get your codes um, once you get done, you know, you just pull this out. Um, if you don't have um, Neptune or Hondata, if you're using just Chrome or something like that, the only way to clear those codes is to either disconnect uh, the battery power uh, or if you have a radio and have a lot of presets and stuff like that. Um, you don't have to do that. You can simply come in and this fuse right here, which is the ECU fuse. You can see on your your diagram here. The ECU is right here. You just pull that fuse out for, I usually leave them out for about a minute. Um, that's usually more than enough time to get the ECU reset. Um, don't have to do that necessarily in this case because we have Neptune. So let's get these plugged back in. Uh, there's that one. So we'll get, get these plugged back in. Alright, now we'll go back into our software. And with Neptune to clear the light, all you literally have to do is clear it. And we have no check engine light now. And the car's gonna run like normal. <laughs> on obviously we have a check engine light so um, if you've ever jumped that little connector down there um, when the car is completely fine so like we don't have a check engine light right now um, you go wide open throttle you have a check engine light there's no flashes that means that um, everything's in perfect working order um, so if you have Neptune on the car um, with the car not running but with the key on you can always check because there may be stored codes that aren't um, that you know could have been in the past um, just like the injector circuit one that I just showed you um, obviously the check engine light wasn't on but that was a stored code so even if you have a stored code um, all you got to do is the same thing you just put the key on uh, go in and hit the 
throttle wide open and it'll give you your codes so um, so yeah so that's just kind of something um, like I said I wanted to go over with you guys uh, we do a lot of this stuff and like I said we get hit up a lot about um, cars that are running poorly um, the check engine lights on and people I mean we do a lot of Neptune so if you have Neptune and um, you know you have a check engine light on this is a real easy way to check um, as far as the codes themselves um, there's you know a hundred places online that if you just go go to Google and type in OBD1 Honda ECU codes um, it'll pull up what all the codes are and man really nine times out of ten um, cars that have a check engine light on um, that are running poorly the check engine light is usually going to tell you what's wrong with the car. Um, like I said, I don't mind doing it. Um, we obviously just have to bill for our time when a car comes in. Um, you know, I've got a car that I'm waiting for the customer to pick up that was right up this alley. So the car came in um, with a check engine light on. It wouldn't stay running. Um, basically, it's, you know, hooked up the laptop to it. It was Neptune. Um, the, you know, it tells me what the codes are. I actually didn't even hook up the laptop before I got the codes with Neptune. You just wide open throttle it, count the codes. Um, it had four or five codes for, um, they put them, they rebuilt the motor and put the motor in. And obviously with Hondas, there's a bunch of plugs that are the same plugs um, that can be easy to get swapped around and stuff like that. So um, that particular car had, you know, four different plugs, I believe, maybe five um that were just all swapped around so the car was running really poorly and they you know tried their best to chase uh the issue around a little bit and adjust the idle and do some stuff um that was their main complaint is that the car wouldn't idle um but the the main thing was the the intake air temp sensor and the idle air control valve plugs were swapped around and so the car was uh not running obviously wouldn't idle wasn't getting a good uh reading on temp um, you know, read the codes, took me right to the problem, you know, car's fixed and ready to go. So that's just something, like I said, you guys should be aware of. Um, we need to get this shared around the, like the Honda page and stuff like that so that, um, you know, a lot of people can take care of this stuff on their own. Um, you know, if it's got a bad TPS or a bad map sensor, you know, if you have just one code for a bad map sensor, you know, let's say, um, Obviously, this car's got like a three bar on it, but if you know you check the plugs to the map sensor and the plugs in good working order doesn't look to be damaged or no wires are frayed or pulled out or anything like that, chances are it's probably just going to be a bad map sensor. Um, so that's something that you know you can easily find stock map sensors for free, if not you know five, ten bucks, something like that, and you can pop one on and it's relatively easy to figure out if if it's a sensor or not. So. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it for now. Uh, just a quick, like I said, quick little video I wanted to share with you guys and show you guys how to basically do some codes. Um, I'm not super familiar with Honda if it has the ability to do the same thing like the Neptune does, but um, most of the cars that we do here end up on Neptune, so that's kind of kind of where we're we're at with uh, with uh, with reading codes. So. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Um, if you like the content you saw, please like, subscribe, uh, hit us up for more. Uh, message us on the ARW page on Facebook uh, if you have any questions with anything or we can help you out with anything. So uh, that'll do it. Have a good week, guys.